So I'm a teacher seven, Mr. Barry here. Today we're going to be doing lesson number four with our computer literacy class. So hopefully you get your Chromebook or your other laptop, turn that on, get into your Google account and get ready to do our work while we do the lesson on another screen or you do the split screen by doing alt bracket for a Chromebook and now split your screen so it'll be the alt and then the left bracket to slide part of your screen over to the left and you click on the other active window and you can go alt right bracket to slide that part of the screen over to the right hand side and on a Windows machine you would use the flag key and the arrow keys to split your screens that way and before I forget I want to do a shout out for Jay Fitzpatrick for discovering my mistake in one of my previous videos on the topic of can a Chromebook get a virus and basically I misspoke when I said Chromebooks have a write only chip and I meant to say a read only chip oh well hey thank you for discovering that mistake and let me know about it hey and if you're new to the channel please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to receive notifications on new and upcoming videos and click on the thumbs up if you like the video hey let's get started with the introduction for lesson number four in your computer literacy Today is lesson number four or week number four for the computer literacy course. In the past we've been getting into our Google accounts and learning about our Google Drive and last week we were able to get into Google Docs. This week we're going to be going over and doing a little bit of review with our Google Drive and then getting into Google Docs and doing the next project. Speaking of the Google Drive, the Google Drive is there, it's a free service and it's a place where you can actually store other files besides your Google Documents or Google Sheets. It is possible that you can upload, for example, your photos or other media to that area. However, Google Photos is more aligned to doing that. For example, if you use Google Photos, you have free unlimited storage for your photos and media, such as videos. So let's get started with the lesson. The Google Drive is going to be the place where we're going to be storing all of our documents, spreadsheets, and PowerPoint presentations in. It's also an easy place to find Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides. Let's go over some of the features that we see in it now. First off, whenever you are within your Google Drive, you should see the Google Drive icon in the upper left hand corner as you see I have highlighted here. You can search your Google Drive for any files, folders, and even the content of those files. So if you had a file with the word bananas in it, you can actually just type in bananas up in the search drive and you'll find that document that includes that word. Next is the help button. Click there whenever you need help. Then you have the gear icon. The gear icon is a quick way to find all of your settings that you can change within your Google Drive. Next is the Google Apps icon. If you click there, it will reveal your Google Apps, which is a convenient place to find things such as your YouTube, email, Hangouts, and Google Photos. Next is a small circle with numbers in it. That's your notification area. Whenever anyone shares a document or folder with you, you'll be notified in that area. Then you have your Google Account Avatar. This is the one place where you can find your security information so you can change your password or do other things with your Google account. Then there's the new button. This is the one place where you can create a new folder or even upload files or folders from your machine to your Google Drive. You can also create new blank documents, new blank spreadsheets, or a host of other types of files by simply using the new button. This area shows your address of where you are located within the My Drive. For example, if you click on one of your folders such as your project folder, you should notice that it would say My Drive and then Project Folder in this red area. The next small icon that we see is the List or Grid View Options. This will change the way that we see all of our files and folders from either the List or the Grid View. The small blue circle with the small eye in it is the show or hide details about your work. This section shows the areas of a drive. The first one is my drive where you see the main drive. Below that is computers and then we see the area for shared with me. These are files and folders that others are sharing with you. Then the recent which shows your recent work. 
then start, which is any projects that you have start will appear in there, and then trash and backups. This is the quick access area. Any work that you've worked on recently will appear here. This area shows all of your activity. For example, any files or folders that you've uploaded to the drive, as well as any files that you've created. This area shows how much space you've used up in your drive. Now you do have unlimited storage for things such as your Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides. But things that do take up space would be something like your Microsoft Word documents. Central location is the view within the area that you're looking at. So if you're within a folder, you're going to see the files within that folder. In this case, I'm at my main drive, so I'm actually seeing the folders which are stored on my main drive. This is why you want to be aware of which address or location you are in by looking at the top red area where it says My Drive. Whenever you go into your project folder, it will say My Drive and then Project Folder. And then below on the lower square or lower area, you'll be seeing the contents of that particular folder. We'll now need to open up our books and begin lesson number four. Using Google Docs with WordArt to create a greeting card. We're going to be having practice within the Google Docs today. So step number one, we'll need to start the Google Chrome browser by clicking its icon. We'll have the cartoon Barry here. He's going to be pointing out special notes, which I'll be asking about at the end of the lesson. Step number two, if the browser is not showing the Google web page, then you'll need to go to the Google website by keying in Google into the address box and then hitting the control and enter keys. This will put the www.google.com into the address box and then it will load the Google page for us. Remember that the whenever you press control and enter after keying in the word Google, it will always add the www and the .com for us. Step number three, the Google website should load showing that you are the user who is logged in. Step number four, if you are not logged in at this time, please log in now. You can do this by clicking on the blue sign in button and then typing in the correct username and password in the spaces provided. Number five, after logging in, click on the Google Apps icon. Number six, a menu should appear. Number seven, you need to click on the Google Drive icon. Step number eight, the Google Drive should then load. Number nine, double click on your projects folder. This will open it. Number 10, the projects folder should open after double clicking it. Step number 11, click on the large new button. 12, a menu should appear. Click on the Google Docs icon. Thirteen, a dialog box should open asking you if you want to create this in a shared folder. You need to click on create and share button. Now if it does not show this, then you might not be in the projects folder. A new page should load showing the blank document within Google Docs. If you are asked to create this document using templates, click on No Thanks. 14. Click on the document's title where it says Untitled Document. This is found in the upper left hand corner next to the blue square which is the Google Docs home. Now after you clicked in where it says Untitled Document, give the document the name Project 2 as seen here. Then hit the enter key once. Did you know that there is another way to rename a document? You can do this by simply clicking on file and then go ahead and clicking on rename and then typing in the new name project 2. Step number 15. Click on file. The file menu should appear as seen here. 16. Click on page setup which is found towards the bottom of this long menu. 17. The page setup window should appear as seen here. 
This area allows you to change your page orientation from portrait to landscape. It also allows us to change the paper size, the page color, and our margins. Step 18. We'll need to change the orientation to landscape and then set the margins to be 0.5 as seen in the above image. After you've changed your orientation to landscape and your margins to be 0.5, you'll need to click on the blue OK button. Step number 20. After clicking on the blue OK button, you should now notice that the document has changed its size in respect to the ruler found near the top of the document. Step number 21. Click on Insert revealing the Insert menu. Now from within the Insert menu, you'll see the word Table. It's the very second option. Step number 22. Float your mouse over the word Table and across to this grid pattern. Click on the second cell within the grid pattern. This will form a two by one table in your document. So go ahead and click it and you'll see a table that has two columns and one row. Step 23. A table should appear within your document as seen here. Notice that you have two columns and one row. Step number 24. You'll need to center the text by clicking on the center align icon as seen here. Did you know that you can also center your text by using the shortcut Control shift e Step 25. You'll need to hit that enter key 34 times to increase the size of your table. If you make a mistake, simply click the undo button. 26. The insertion point should be at the bottom of the row, as seen here. You'll need to type created by and then your name as seen here. 27. Hit the tab key once to move the insertion point to the next cell of the table. The tab key is found on the left hand side of the keyboard and should say tab on it. Step 28. The insertion point should be at the top of the second row now as seen here. Center the text by clicking on the center align icon which looks like this. We'll now have a quick introduction to WordArt. Google's WordArt is a wonderful tool which can be found within the larger drawing tool. It contains a collection of decorative text graphics which may be inserted into any document. You may even create word art with multiple lines of text by simply using the shift enter shortcut. Once the image has been inserted within your document, it may be resized or rotated to any angle. Step number 29. To find this useful tool, take your mouse and click on insert which is found near the top on the top toolbar. Step 30. The insert menu should appear as seen here. 31. Click on the drawing link found within the insert menu and then click on new. 32. The drawing tool should open as seen here. 33. Locate the actions button and then click it to reveal its menu. 34. Click on the link called WordArt, which is found within the Actions menu. 35. A small text box should open as seen here. 36. Key in the word Happy without the quotation marks. Remember, do not use the enter key to jump to the next line during this time. Step 37. After keying in the word happy, use the shortcut shift enter to lower the insertion point one space as seen here in this image. 38. Key in the word thanksgiving 
without the quotation marks on the second line. 39. After keying in Happy Thanksgiving into the dialog box, you may now hit the Enter key once. The drawing window will change as seen here. Step number 40. Change the font of the word art by clicking on the Arial font, which is found near the top, and then selecting Lobster. If you do not see Lobster on the font list, you may add it by clicking on More Fonts and then finding it within that area. 41. The text Happy Thanksgiving should change as seen here. 42. Click on the Fill Color tool found within the Drawing menu. 43. Once the Fill Color tool has been clicked, a color palette should appear as seen here. Step number 44. Select the orange color from within the Fill Color palette. You do that by clicking once on the orange color. 45. The color of the text should change to orange. 46. Click on the Save and Close button. 47. The document should now look like this. 48. Hit the Enter key twice to lower the insertion point. 49. This is now going to be a quick introduction to images. Images is a collection of pictures and graphics which may be inserted into any document. Once the image has been inserted into the document, it may be resized or even cropped. These tools look very useful. Notice that you have a rotating tool at the very top of any image that's been clicked on. It will be a blue circle. Surrounding your area of the image is little blue squares. These small blue squares are used for resizing the image. Below the image would be the text wrapping style. You can have the inline, wrap text, and break text. So now remember that any image may be cropped by double clicking the image and then dragging the black lines as seen here. The image tools also appear whenever the image is clicked upon. Within the image option box, there are many ways to customize the image. For example, I can change its transparency, the brightness, the contrast, as well as a host of other things such as recoloring it and doing other things such as resetting my adjustments. Let's now insert an image with step number 50. To insert an image into this document, you'll need to click on the word insert. The word insert is found near the top toolbar. 51. Once you've clicked on insert, a menu will pop down. 52. Click on the word image which should be the very first option on this menu. 53. Once you've clicked on image, a menu should appear to the right. 54. Click on search the web option, which is the last word on that list to the right. Step 55. The Google Images side window should appear as seen here. 56. You need to type in the number 995263 into the search box and then hit the enter key once. This will bring up the specific Thanksgiving image that we are looking for. So again, that number is 995 Two, six, 
three and then you'll see the images appear. The window should change the one seen here. Step 58. Take your mouse and double click on the image of the pumpkin that says a day to share. 59. The Google image side window should automatically close. 60. Your document should now look like this one where it shows Happy Thanksgiving and then below that you have a small space and then a large image of a pumpkin that says a day to share. 61. Click once in the center of the image of the pumpkin. Step 62. Blue squares should surround the image. These squares allow you to resize the image. The circle allows you to rotate the image and the text box at the bottom of the image allows you to change the image's wrapping style. 63. Drag the lower right blue square towards the center of the image. Then release the mouse clicker when you have resized the image to half its original size as seen here. The reality is that any corner square will do the same job as far as resizing your image. Remember that you can always use the undo button to fix any mistakes. A drag is performed by holding down the left mouse clicker on an element and then moving the element to its desired position and letting go of the clicker once the desired position is achieved. Now we should be ready for step 64. Click once below the table to unhighlight the image of the pumpkin as seen here. So what you're going to do is take your mouse and click below the whole line of this table as seen here and the image of your pumpkin should become unhighlighted. You should also see a flashing insertion point below the table. Step 65. Hit the enter key five times to move the insertion point to the second page. This is the inside cover of your greeting card. Step 66. You need to center the text by clicking on the center align icon which is found by clicking this icon as seen here and then going down and clicking on this icon. Step 67. You now need to type in this message. The message should read as follows. Capital M for may your blessings be multiplied this year and throughout all your life period. Next line. Capital H for happy. Capital T for thanksgiving wishes to you explanation mark next line capital W wishing you a harvest of blessings comma good health comma and good times period next line capital H for happy capital T for Thanksgiving day explanation mark so I'll give you some time to key in that message into your document and while you're doing that, I'm going to be talking about fonts in detail. A font is a particular size, weight, and style of a typeface. Notice how the font called Lobster has a particular style or look so that all of your letters match. Fonts can be changed by clicking on the font name found on the toolbar, which is normally Arial. Google Docs has hundreds of different fonts. To find more, all you need to do is click on More Fonts. This is found near the top of your font list. Any font can be added simply by clicking on it and then selecting the blue OK button. Fonts can also be changed in size by clicking on the number found on the toolbar and then selecting a new size. For example, if you click on the 11 and then choose the size 14, the new size of your font will be size 14. Now let's go back to the greeting card. You should be done typing in that message by now and now we'll be ready for step number 68. 
highlight the message and then change its font size to 36 by clicking on the font size and then changing it from size 11 to size 36. You may highlight the message by taking your mouse and then dragging the mouse pointer over the words. After changing the font size to 36, you'll then be ready for step 69. With the message still highlighted, change the font to Impact and you're almost done. Step number 70. Click once after the last line of the message to unhighlight it as seen here. Step 71. After unhighlighting the text, hit the enter key once and change the font size to size 11 by clicking on the font size and changing it back from 36 to size 11. Step number 72. Once you have changed the font size, key in the address 123w.eastavenue, period. This is done without the quotation marks. 73. Highlight the address by dragging your mouse over the text. The text should become highlighted as seen here. 74. Copy the text by using the shortcut Control C. A shortcut is done by holding the first key and then tapping the second key once and then letting go of both keys. 75. Scroll up to the first page of the letter and then click on the area immediately to the right of the image of the pumpkin as seen in this picture. Step number 76. Once you have clicked on that area, hit the enter key once. The insertion point should then appear directly below the image of the pumpkin as seen here. Step number 77. Paste the text of the address by using the shortcut Control V. It should appear like this. Step number 78. The address should appear below the image as seen here. The card is complete. Step number 79. This document is being shared automatically with your teacher, Mr. Barry because it was created within a shared folder. In this lesson, we covered a number of features found within Google Docs. We went over renaming a Google Doc, changing the page margins and page orientation, using the ruler to gauge the position of the text within your Google Doc, inserting tables. We learned how to center the text. We used the undo button using the tab key to jump to the next cell within a table, how to use the word art tool, how to copy and paste, how to insert an image, how to resize, rotate and crop an image, how to change the font, how to change the size of the font. We'll now be ready for review questions for lesson number four. You know, if you're taking this for credit, take a clean sheet of paper and then write your name along the top line or you may email me the results. After answering the questions found on the next pages, turn the page into Mr. Berry. Question number one, under which menu can we find that page setup? Question number two, what is the shortcut that we use to insert the www and .com within the web addresses? Step number three, what is this called? Number four, what is this called?
Number five, is this book's orientation portrait or landscape? Number six, what does this icon do? Number seven, what is the name of this icon? Question number eight, what is the name of the tool that allows you to create nice logos and fancy text? Question number nine, which menu holds the images link? Question number 10, what is the name of this icon or this icon? These are found near the top of your screen. Question number 11, images can be rotated to any angle. Is this A true, B false, or C none of the above? Question number 12, Google Drive is free. Is this A true, B false, or C none of the above? Step number 13, the redo option is in the where? Is it A, the view menu, B, the edit menu, C, the tools menu, or D, none of the above? Fourteen, the print option is in the where? Is it within the A, file menu, B, the edit menu, C, the tools menu, or D, none of the above? Question number 15. Documents can be created with what? Is it A, Hangouts, B, the Google Docs, C, the Google Pro, or D, none of the above? Question number 16. Text and images can be pasted into a Google document. Is this A true, B false, or C none of the above? Question number 17. The ruler is found. Is it A at the bottom, B at the top? C at the left side, or D all of the above? Eighteen, which image tool is used to rotate an image within Google Docs? Is it A, the small blue squares, B, the small blue circles, C, the small blue triangles, or D, none of the above. Question number 19. 
Question number 19. Which image tool is used to resize an image within Google Docs? Is it A, the small blue squares? B, the small blue circles? C, the small blue triangles? Or D, none of the above? Question number 20. Which image tool is used to crop an image within Google Docs? Is it A, B, C, or D, all of the above? Well, that completes our lesson number four. If you like this lesson, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below because I love to read your comments, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you very much and bye bye.